Okay, so this is a no-nonsense guide to the Eglund Gambit. So these guides are all about giving you a playable opening to making the fewest possible moves so you can just sort of get on with playing chess and not get caught out with these uh, sort of unsound openings. Okay, so let's have a look. So the England comes about after the moves d4 and e5. And it's Black's attempt to sort of play play for a sort of an aggressive sort of tactical opening, uh, which sometimes doesn't suit the d4 player. So what I recommend uh, against this is, you know, playing something different to what you might normally play. So if you're a London player or a Collie player or something like that, or you want to go into more traditional d4 lines, then I would recommend, you know, not trying to sort of stick to that system opening if that's what you do and just play something different and i'm going to show you something really simple that you can just get a better game and not get into any of the black nonsense okay so first of all before i show you that let's just have a look at what black wants you to play right so black wants you to uh, take the pawn which we will do but we're not going to hang on to the pawn in our line yeah, black wants to take the pawn and after the moves knight c6 knight f3 queen e7 what black is absolutely hoping that you'll do is play bishop f4, right? And that's just not to be done at all. So no bishop f4, we're not going to allow that at all for white. But black is hoping for beyond hope that you're going to play bishop f4, okay? And it's the whole object of this opening for black is hoping that you'll play that move. Because what they're wanting to do is play the trap lines uh, with queen b4 check, you know, hitting the uh, bishop, obviously checking, and hitting the bishop as well, and also coming to here. And there's just a load of trappy stuff that's uh, you know, really nasty f for white in this position. And black just wants to play this opening just to sort of win in these sort of trappy lines, which is not sound chess, because all we need to do is, you know, play correct moves against it, and then just in a worse position. And that's that's what we're going to do in this, in this video. But after this line, they're hoping for you to uh, you know have to drop the bishop back and takes what they're really really hoping for is for you to uh, you know target in the rook in this position they want you to play this move uh bishop to c3 you know trying to protect the rook but this is just bad because after the bishop swoops in then uh, there is no capture and the bishop's pinned and then after this move bishop takes knight takes why it's just in a whole load of trouble like you know the the knight's target and this is on in attack it's just you know, it's just horrific for white, but we're just not going to get involved in any of those lines. You know, let black spend all their time preparing for this, and we're just not going to bother. So what we're going to do instead is this. So after d4, e5, I advocate that we take the pawn, but we don't try and hold on to the pawn. And this, I think, is just the simplest way to progress uh, and play against this opening. So after this move, we're going to get knight c6, play knight f3, queen e7, obviously not bishop f4. What I recommend is giving the pawn back, and just play knight c3. After this move, knight c3, knight takes. The next move I recommend playing is just e4. Okay, and then the game goes on. And that's basically, that's the basic bare minimums you need to know in this opening. So I'll just go through that again very quickly. So d4, e5, take the pawn, knight c6, knight f3, queen e7, knight, knight c3, takes, and then e4. So you're basically bringing both knights out and playing e4. Right, so it couldn't be simpler than that, and you're just going to get a better game. So let's have a look at a couple of things. Oh, before we look at a couple of more things, just additional ideas, uh, just make a suggestion that knight d5 in this position looks good because you're hitting the queen and you're targeting this square. Yeah, so you know, on first sight, this looks a good move. But after captures, you have to take with the g-pawn and the queen can drop back. And this is not, I don't think this is great for white. So just some additional ideas uh, from this position. Uh, you, know, you could just play sensible moves. You don't really need to know this. You just play sensible moves uh, from this position. And I think White just has an easy game. But, for example, if Knight takes, we just take back with the Queen. You know, I'd be looking at developing the Bishop at some point, castle in, and, and just continue playing, you know, just normal logical stuff. And you're just going to get an, an easy game. Now, it might be different from your normal sort of D4 stuff, but it's still sort of basic stuff bringing your pieces out to, to sensible positions and just the game goes on and you're going to be slightly better so another thing they might try is d6 on move two so let's look at this idea d4 e5 takes and then they might try d6 right and what i'm going to advocate is we keep it really really simple and we just play the same stuff right so knight f knight to f3 you know play knight c6 and then knight c3 right whatever moves they play just play e4 
and we display the same stuff. What you can do instead, uh, if you want to, after d6, uh, instead of playing knight c3, you could play e4, and then you could sort of sometimes go into this position and go into an endgame like that, which is, I think that's just a better position for white uh, if you want to. But if you want to keep it simple, just stick to the original plan. Not that one. D6. Just bring the knights out and play for, you know. And and we just not want to go into this idea. What what uh, what Black wants, no doubt, is for you to take. Uh, and there's, there'll be more gambit ideas. Yeah, Bishop D6. Black wants to play this gambit style where they're giving away pawns for attacking positions. So if they want to play that, we're not going to give them that. We're going to give them a more, you know, solid dry game, and we're just going to watch them sort of uh, get disappointed. Really, you know, that's that's the plan. Right, so I found a, a sample game in in our, in our easy line that I just thought I'd show you uh, pretty quickly, just to give you a, an idea of the sort of stuff that you might might expect. So uh, after D4, E5, uh, you know, the computer. I don't know how to turn this computer uh, graphic off, but it does show you that it's a dubious move anyway. <laughs> so, d4, e5, we take. Knight c6, knight f3, queen e7. Obviously, our plan is just to bring the knight out and play e4. Takes e4. Right, and that, that's the plan. That's a simple plan. And that's really all you need to know, essentially. But let's just have a look at the full game. Uh, okay, okay. Simple development. If the knight takes, then this is fine. Castles. c6. Preventing the uh, knight jumping into d5, supposedly, <laughs> right? And you'll see the problem with queen e7 is that it's just moves like this. Simple developing moves potentially put black in, in problems, really. You know, I know there's a lot of pieces in the way at the moment, but, you know, tactics happen when there's, there's things that are in alignment like that. So the game continued, knight f6, and then knight d5 anyway, right? So these sort of tactics... Are just inherent in the position because of the queen, you know, for example, the queen pin. So if pawn takes, then this bishop's pinned, you know, and that's that's Black's issue with queen e7 early on, really. Uh, so yeah, I'll just quickly freak through the game just to give you a feel for the position, not really looking at the moves as such, but just so you get an idea of the type of thing to expect. So even in this late stage of the middle game, Black still got this issue. You know, along the uh, E file, which will be uh, Black's undoing in this game, actually. Uh, just playing through the games really quickly to give you a feel. You know, this is a nice idea, just increasing pressure on this file because you can then, you know, threaten to exchange. What you're doing is threatening this move, takes, queen takes back, and then you bring the other rook, which is now defended by the king. So, a nice little idea. And then anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So in the game, Black ended up actually just taking the uh, rook for the queen, and there were a few more moves, uh, and White eventually wins. Uh, after let's have a look, Queen F6, White has got you know too much, too much pressure in the position. The king's trapped in the open board. You know this is where your calculation exercises and your tactics comes into play. Really, uh, you know, things like this. It's just it's, you know it's going to be all over. D, queen d7 and then check check and then there's going to be a checkmate in the position at some point right or easily win up the queen let's just look at some ideas you know you can just win the queen and checkmate positions occur as well give you a quick example very quick <laughs> okay so that's that's just uh, an overview of one game i wanted to show you so very briefly if you want me to just quickly run through uh, the main opening again so d4, e5, we take the pawn, knight c6, knight f3, queen e7, we bang out the other knight and watch the disappointment fall on black's face, and after takes, we just play e4. So that's, that's the general plan then. Okay, so hope you like this video, and take care.